Hello, and welcome back to uh, Katawa Shoujo. Almost forgot the name. So, we left we left off at this question. So, let's. Why is there text here? Oh, I think that's from when I played last time. So, let's see. What should I? Let's. What should I ask about? Let, let's ask about the library. Oh yeah, is there a library in the school? Lately I've gotten into reading a lot, so I'd like to check it out. Misha gives me a kind of frown that makes me clear that she doesn't consider reading a healthy hobby, but then picks up her smile again. There is! It's in the second floor. We can show you sometime. Thanks. I return to my food while the girls talk between themselves. Misha and Suzum signed back and forth very an animatedly. And that, and that, and, and well, I don't know. Throwing sideways glasses at me, but Misha refrained from translating. Maybe they are talking about secret girl stuff or something. Dot, dot, dot. I quickly notice the conversation in sign is not enough to fill a silence. We arrive in the classroom early, but we're not the first. That dark haired girl I noticed before is slumped over their desk at the last row. The hell was that? She jumps a little and Misha crashes into the room with her elegance of a rhino. She shrieks deeper into her seat. I can feel her tension all the way from here. As if she's slowly turning into stone just for my presence. Misha and Zizun either don't notice or don't mind it, as they walk directly past her to their seats and begin the conversation, begin to converse. I like that word converse, I use that word a lot. I'm left wondering about her, even when the classroom slowly fills with other students, and finally the teacher. Why do I have the mouse in the middle? Getting into the rhythm of school feels strange. It's as if my brain remembers how this is done, but my body doesn't. I feel like that all the time. Towards the end of the class, I start yawning and counting the minutes left. I shouldn't be this tired on the first day of school. Maybe it's a long time spent in the hospital that made me like this. I even feel physically weak and lifeless. Before long, the final bell rings. School is finally over for the day. Besides me, Misha and Suzuna are having a short conversation. After a bit of deliberation, Misha turns to me. Dot dot dot. Unfortunately, we can't stay and show you around today. Chan. We've got to hurry already, since there's a lot of work for us to do. Dot dot dot. You'll find a way around here, I'm sure of it. Uh, wait, the teacher said I have to go see the nurse? Where do I have to go? Is that so? We can at least show you that much. Come on, the nurses the nurses have their own building, so we can go outside. We have to go outside. We join the flow of students making their way down to the stairwells and outside and outside. With the girls pointing out the senior classrooms and the hallway of Azars. When we get outside the girl makes their way to a smaller building right next to the school. It's built in the same style, so it looks like an actual part of the main building. Dot dot dot. This is the auxiliary building here. There are a lot of official and important stuff inside, like the Yomako Foundation office and all the nurses' offices. They even have a swimming pool. How is that official? Dot dot dot. Don't be silly, Hichan. It's for physical therapy, of course. Anyway, all the nursing staff facilities are in there too. The head nurse's office is on the first floor. You'll be fine from here, right? We'll be going then. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye. Or thanks. Bye. A whole building for stuff that has nothing to do with the actual education. I guess it's necessary for a place like this. <coughs> Sorry about that. I walk in hoping that it 
hoping this is really to be a quick visit like the teacher said. On a white door on the left is a green cross with the text head nurse and an, on a nameplate. A voice from inside responds to my knock almost immediately, but I can't quite make it out. It sounded a bit like an invitation to open the door, so I invite myself further in. The room is not large and it smells strange. A friendly looking man turns around on his office chair to face me as I answer. His desk is neat and tidy, but the bin under the tent is overflowing with used medical utensils and there are at least a dozen cup coffee rings lingering on the desk. Hello there. What can I do for you today? He is a young looking sort of rugged, but the dimples in his cheek wash that impression away from it when he smiles. Um, are you the nurse? He, sm he smiles like a person who has heard the same question hundreds of times. Why, yes, I am. It says on the door, no? It says on the door, no? You can call me by my name or just a nurse, like everybody else. That's <laughs> like a mixture of Irish and Spanish. Of course, I shake off the confusion, realizing I probably should grab his extended hand. His handshake is rather firm and friendly. Right, er, I'm a new student, and I'm my homeroom teacher told me to come and meet you. My name is Sao Nakai. His eyes light up with revelation, and he snaps his fingers. Oh, you're that Nakai. I was just reading your file this morning. Some kind of chronic arrhythmia and related congenital heart muscle deficiency, right? He gestures me to sit down at a vacant armchair in front of his desk. Uh, yeah. Good. We'll probably have been briefed about the school enough, so I'll just I'll go over this quickly. We have all kinds of facilities available, mostly physical therapy and such. There's always someone from my nurse. Wait, wait a minute. There's always someone from my nurse staff around, even at night. So never hesitate to call us if there's a problem. The famous 24-hour nursing staff. Wow, this is a this is like a hospital. Well, not exactly. For instance, we don't have a brain surgery here. His joke feels so out of place that I left thinking why he even said it. <laughs> yeah. Just that it's really weird to have so many medical people at the school. He'll get used to it. I'm not sure of myself, but I don't let the nurse know it. Now let me find you your file again. Riley searches for something from his computer and shuffles stacks of paper around. I let my gaze wander around the room. It's the anatomy of generic. I'd say, like to say, beige walls and ceiling, dark gray laminate flooring, and all the equipment you'd expect from a school's nurse office. Even the ridiculous education posters are hanging on all four walls, reminding me to eat properly three times a day, and from all the food groups. Smiling, the nurse draws a thick file from a stack of similarly thick files and opens it. So, you already have medication for your arrhythmia. Just remember to take your pills every morning and evening, or it won't be much help. Apart from that, do you do any sports? Rash stuff? I don't know, boxing? He grins to his own joke, but I don't. Oh, uh, well, I played soccer occasionally with classmates. Alright, I'm afraid I'm going to recommend you refrain from doing that. At least for the time being. Oh. My lack of reaction makes him raise an eyebrow. But really, I'm not too bothered by his form forbidding forbidding me to kick a ball. Forbidding me to kick a ball. I guess I never did it out of a burning passion for the sport. Just to have something to do. Any kind of concussion might be dangerous to your heart and risking other attacks is not a good idea. Was the previous one caused or a sudden concussion to the chest area? There is no mention to the cause in your paper. Er, um, not exactly. I sidestepped the question, except 
acceptably, and he glances at me over his papers, with a more serious expression on his face. Still, you need to keep your body healthy so the exercise would be good. Do you good. We have physical therapy and such available, as I said, but I don't think you really need such heavy measures. Just get some light exercise regularly. Brisk walks or even light jogging, jumping rope, that sort of thing. Swimming, maybe? There's a pool here. So I was told. You were. Very good. At any rate, I'm sure you've been told this before. You just need to take care not to overexert yourself. He wags his finger to emphasize the point. He needs... No need, really. I've heard this a thousand times already. Absolutely no unnecessary risks. Take care of yourself. Okay. He goes over a paper one more time and sets them on the desk. Obviously content. Good. That's it, then. Come meet me if you ever need, so ever need something. I mushered out before I even realized it. A quick visit, indeed. I end up standing in the front of the main building and auxiliary building. Although my eyes, they still look one and the same. Ah, excuse me. Sorry about that. It's the first real look I get at the other students, so I watch people coming out of the school, going towards the gate or the dorms. Everyone seems to know where they are going. I still keep thinking that most of them don't look too special for being students at a special school. Then again, neither do I. Does that make me one of them? One of us? Hmm. I should go somewhere too, to prevent me from getting lost. It's around dinner time, but I feel tired instead of hungry. The weariness in me grows as I tre as I trudge towards the dorms. Set a little way apart from the building complex, from the main building complex. There's a garden of sorts in between the school and the dorms. Shrubbery, flowers, and overbearing smell of fresh cut grass that fills the atmosphere. It dawns on me tight. Oh, wait. It dawns on me tired. It dawns on my tired mind that the smell feels novel because I haven't been outside. As so long. God, I suck at reading. The dorm building is big and made of red bricks like the others. It feels way too pompous for what it is, so I push forward going inside. It takes more time than necessary to fish out the key I was given from my pocket. Room 119. Despite the ornate the or exterior, the inside of the door is fairly new functional and boring. Just like in the main building, the halls and the doors are wide to accommodate wheelchairs. The same goes for the elevators at the end of the hallways. I poke my head around the corner of the common room doors. Inside a few students are watching TV. One nods and gives a quick hello before turning back to the TV. It seems that one of the girls around here are social, sociable. I suppose that's perfectly fine with me. I climb the stairs to the upper floor. Here, small corridors branch off to the main hallway. Each of these minor halls seems to have a toilet and a shower as well as four rooms. About halfway down the hall, I spy room 119. The nameplate on the door has just been to mine are blank. I guess there are just two of us here. Light shines before the door of 117, so I knock lightly. Hello? Is anybody home? From a side I hear a few movements and a clicking of the way it locks than I than I thought these doors had. After a moment the door squeaks open. I'll be spatch I'll be spectacled? I'll be spectacled. A bespectable boy is standing in the doorway. He is looking at me intently through his extremely thick glasses. Who is it? Blind? Nah, at least not completely. Why would he have a high glass if he was? He leans closer to me until our noses almost start touching. His breath stinks of garlic. One more thing. Hesao <laughs> Nakai, I'm moving into the next room. 
I thought I should introduce my... His face suddenly brightens in realization, and he stands back upright, thrusting his hand out to smile and greet him, almost straight to a, my diaphragm. Oh, sup, dude? The name's Kenji. Uh, hi. I take Kenji's sweaty hand and shake it. Ugh, that's like the worst handshake you can get as a sweaty one. Still a little rattled by the sudden change of attitude and Ven what? Vermont welcome and Vermont welcome. There's some st some suspicious looking people going in and out of this room earlier. It's probably my parents. Your parents? Sure? Because they could have been some kind of other people too. You can't judge a book by its cover. His out of place proverb and left hanging between us awkwardly as I tried to think some other, some way to respond. I'd say the chances are high enough. He shudders and makes his exaggerated hand gestures. You're a brave man, Hassel. Me? I don't think I can trust the chances. The only, one, the only one I trust is myself. Does that mean I shouldn't get to know you either? He thinks about this for a while. A wise decision. Damn, you are smarter than you look. Probably. What do you look like? I hope not smart. He squints his eyes and leans closer again. But I lean backwards to dodge it. Never mind, it doesn't matter. With that, he turns, fumbles around for a moment in search of the door handle, and shuts the door behind him. I slide the key into the lock of the door marked 119. Bleak beige walls, white linens, a desk made for some type of light wood, ugly curtains. It's no one's room. Impersonal. Like my hospital room. Was. I'm back there sitting at the foot of the bed looking a lot emptier than they did this morning. The closet is sitting open, stocked with my clothes. You know, I'm kind of tired, so I think I'll stop here. Next time, we'll continue from here, so see you guys later.